Now, we are going to take up one more problem on simply supported beam. The problem number 14, it reads as a simply supported beam capital AB of 6 meter span is loaded as shown in this figure. Draw the SFD and BMD also indicate the point of counter flexure if F. So when you see this beam, you have the simply supported beam at the point A and B, which is a span of 6 meters. And you can see between A and C you have a 10 kN per meter of uniformly distributed load for a span of 3 meters. And at the point C, we have a 45 kN acting downwards. And at the point D, you have a clockwise couple, which is 120 kN meter. Now, first, we need to find the support reactions. So, taking the moments about the point A, so what will going to be the, the sum of the clockwise couple will be equal to anti-clockwise couple. So, that means RBV into 6 will be counterclockwise, will be equal to clockwise now. So, that will be equal to 10 into 3 into 3 by 2, 10 into 3 into 3 by 2. Then we have plus 120 because it is clockwise couple. Then plus 45 into 3. So, these are the three forces which is active. So, in other words, if you are taking from here, 120 plus 45 into 3 plus 10 into 3 into 3 by 2. So, on simplification, you will going to get RBV will be equal to 50 kN. Also, we know that the sum of the vertical reactions acting upwards will be equal to sum of the vertical reactions acting downwards. So, that means RAV plus RBV will be equal to 10 into 3 plus 45. So, that will be equal to 75. So, RAV will be equal to 75 minus 50, which will be equal to 25 kilonewton. So, that way RAV will be having 25 kilonewton and RBV will be having 50 kilonewton. Now, we will go to the next. So, we are going to consider between A and C with the only the UDL. We are not considering the point load the point C at the beginning. So, what will going to be the shear force of the point A? The shear force of the point A will be equal to plus 25 kilonewton. SF at C will be equal to 25 plus 10 into 3, uh, sorry, 25 minus 10 into 3, which will be equal to minus 5 kilonewton. So, therefore, when you are considering for the shear force, so from here, it is take 25 kilonewton and from C to C, it drops down and changes its sign from positive to negative for a distance of 5 kilonewton. Then similarly, <coughs> SF varies plus from 25 kilonewton to minus 5 kilonewton according to the equation of straight line because since it is UDL, it is W into X, so the power of X is 1. Therefore, you will going to get a line between 25 kilonewton to 5 kilonewton. Now, what will going to be the bending moment at the point A and C now? BM at A will be equal to 0 and BM at C will be equal to 25 into 3 plus 25 into 3 minus 10 into 3 into 3 by 2. On simplification, you will going to get it as plus 30 kilonewton meter. So, join, we will not going to join between 0 to 30 kilonewton meter because SF changing its sign from positive to negative at that point you will going to get the maximum bending moment. So till to get to the maximum bending moment we will going to keep this point as it is. We will not going to plot this because we don't know exactly at this juncture what will going to be the maximum bending moment at that particular point. So therefore we will going to keep this as a pending. So we will not going to draw a plot. But we are going to identify the point. Then we will going to consider a point load at C and also 1.5 meters of D without considering the couple. See how the behavior will going to change now. What will going to be the SF at the point C now? SF at the point C which was minus 5. So minus 5, minus 45. It will going to become minus 50. So minus 50 kilonewton. But in other words, so SF at C will be equal to plus 25 minus 10 into 3 minus 45. Plus 25 minus 10 into 3 minus 45 will be equal to 
minus 50 kilo Newton. So what happens as between this point so further because due to the point load the point C so what happens it will go into further drops down to minus 50 kilo Newton and between C and D as there is no other load which is acting on the beam therefore it will going to remain constant at minus 50 kilo Newton. So it remains constant at 50 kilo Newton between C and D. Now we will going to apply the bending moment at the point D now. So the bending moment at the point D will be equal to plus 25 into 4.5 minus 10 into 3 into 3 by 2 plus 1.5 minus 45 into 1.5. So as we know from 25 to 4.5 since it is acting upwards, it tends to bend to sag it, so it becomes positive. So when the load is acting from the upward direction, it tends to hog, so naturally it becomes negative. So that is, the beam tries to bend in the downward direction. So minus 10 into 3 into 3 by 2 plus 1.5 because of UDL. And again, 45 is acting from downward direction. Again, the beam will go into hogs, so naturally it becomes negative minus 45 into 1.5. So on simplification, you will go to get it as minus 45 kilo Newton meter. So then what happens? So minus 45 kilo Newton. So that means from the point 30 kilo Newton meter from the positive side, so the beam will go to bend towards the negative side and drops down to minus 45 kilo Newton meter. So once you get this, now we go to the next point. So the next point will going to be the couple we are considering at this particular point and also the beam of the point B, what will going to be the load. So it remains constant between 50 kilo Newton between D and B because of the shear force. What will going to be the SF at the point B now? SF because as the couple will not going to act at that particular point on D, the couple will not be considered for the SFD. So between D and B, it remains constant at minus 50 kilo Newton. What will going to be the SF at the point B now? Minus 50 plus 50. So it becomes minus 50 only. So naturally from here it will going to be at this point is 50 kilo Newton. So this is how you are going to have the shear force diagram. Now what will going to be the bending moment for the point D now? So at the point D you have 25 into 4.5 plus minus 10 into 3 into 3 by 2 plus 1.5 minus 45 into 1.5. So again, you have plus 120 because it's hogs. Hogging is the bend, it tries to bend in the upper direction because due to the clockwise, since it is the clockwise. So this is also clockwise. It will go into hogs the, uh, it will go into sag the bending moment or the beam. So naturally it becomes positive. So on simplification, you will going to get it as plus 75 kilo Newton meter. So bending moment at the point B will be equal to 25 into 6 minus 10 into 3 into 3 by 2 plus 3 minus 45 into 3 plus 120 will be equal to 0. So from plus 75 kilo Newton meter, it drops down to 0 at the bending moment. So when you are considering at the couple of this from minus 45, it rises to plus 75 because due to the couple which is acting clockwise couple which is acting at the point D. So it becomes positive at plus 75 kilo Newton meter. There will be a sudden rise. So once you get this, now we have the points of both shear force diagram and also the bending moment diagram. Now what I need to find out, I need to find out the SF is changing its sign from positive to negative at this point E. So we need to find out what is the distance at this point, at what distance this point E changes its sign from positive to negative first. So maximum bending moment occurs at a point where the SF changes its sign. SF changes its sign at the point E now. So let the distance of E be X meters from A. So therefore, that will be equal to 25 minus 25 equals 10 into x or sf at the point e will be equal to 0. So at this point it will be equal to 25 minus 10 into x plus 25 minus 10 into x. 
So therefore, x will be equal to 2.5 meters from A. The value of x will be 2.5 meters from A. Now, once you get this, x is equal to 2.5. So now the equation changes. So now you know the exact uh, position of the point E, which will be x is equal to 2.5 meters from E. Now, once you get that, then we need to find out what will going to be the bending moment at that particular point, because when the SF changes is sign from positive to negative, the bending moment will be maximum at that particular point. So far, we have not uh, found out the bending moment at the point E now. So what will going to be the bending moment at the point E? So that will be equal to 25 into x, which is nothing but 2.5. So 25 into 2.5 minus 10 into 2.5 into 2.5 by 2. On simplification, you will going to get it as plus 31.25 kilonewton meter. So when you suppose if you are considering this as x, then what happens? 25 into x minus 10 into x into x by 2. When you substitute the value of x as 2.5, then it becomes 25 into 2.5 minus 10 into 2.5 into 2.5 by 2. On simplification, you will going to get it as plus 31.25 kilonewton meter. So now you join between 0 to 31.25 kilonewton meter and from 31.25 kilonewton meter to 30. So this is how you are going to get a parabolic curve as it is a UDL, which is W into X into X by 2. Since the power of X is 2, therefore, you will going to get a parabolic curve on the UDL. So once you get this, now we have the bending moment changes its sign from positive to negative at this point. So, and also there is a bending moment changing its sign from positive to negative at this point. So there are two points of counterflexures, but at the point D, the point of counterflexure is at a distance of 1.5 meters from B. So therefore, we need not have to find out that. But at the point F, what happens? The bending moment is changing its sign from positive to negative, where that is the point where you have the point of counterflexure. But we don't know what ex at what distance exactly that point F is changing its sign. So let us consider that point as Y. So the point of counterflexion at the point F and D, the bending moment changes its sign from positive to negative, and hence these points are called point of counterflexion. That was already explained. Now at point D is 1.5 meters from the right support B, and let Y be the distance of point F from the left support. Then bending moment at that point will be equal to zero because at that point F is changing its sign, so bending moment at that point will be equal to zero which will be equal to plus 25 into y minus 10 into y 10 into 3 into y minus 3 by 2 y minus 3 by 2 because so at this point if you are considering the total distance as y so from the midpoint of this to y will going to be this distance so y minus 3 by 2 is that distance plus 45 that is minus 45 into open the bracket with y minus 3 because that distance from y2 from y minus 3 will going to give you this distance. So that is 45 into y minus 3. Once you expand this, so you are going to get it as 25y minus 30y plus 45 minus 45y plus 135 will be equal to 0. On simplification, then what happens? y will be equal to 3.66 meters from A. So point of control fracture F is 3.6 meters from the left support A. So this is how you will be able to analyze and solve this problem from y is equal to 3.6. So this is how this will going to be the final solution on this above problem. Thank you.